the things that oh, we put up with here very on Absolutely important TV. Details. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Yep. <laughs> What's up, Lively Nation? Welcome back to episode number nine, nine. of Hashtag Ask Lively TV. We got a special guest here today. This is Jeremy Reed. What's up, Jeremy? What's up? Welcome to the show. You guys probably recognize him from a past video we did about douchey things that guys do in the gym and what you should not do. I'm the Lively douche. He is. <laughs> but he's not a douche. Yeah, the complete opposite of the, the douche character that he plays. Really great guy. So you're going to get to know him a little bit better on today's podcast. We're taking your guys' questions, and if you don't know who we are yet, my name is Brad Guthrow, my beautiful wife, Jessica. Hello, I'm Jessica Guthrow. Together we run Live Lean TV, which is this channel you're watching right here. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you actually go to YouTube and watch our Live Lean TV videos. Exactly. We post tons of tips on nutrition, exercise, and everything you need to live lean. Jeremy also has an amazing YouTube channel that you should go look yeah, at. YouTube forward slash Jeremy Reed Fitness. Yeah. And if you are listening, then you're missing three ridiculously good looking people. That's right. <laughs> but we do want to give a shout out to the podcast <laughs> listeners because you guys are new, probably new to the show. We are our new podcast. We want to thank you guys. And also, if you haven't checked out the podcast yet, get over there, rate, review, and comment because that's so important that this is a new channel. We got to get this out to more people. Mm -hmm. So with that said... Let's, go. Let's oh, get into the show. One more thing is if you want to be featured on the show, if you want us to answer your specific question, you can do so by using the hashtag oh, right. TV. Don't forget. But make sure you use yes. at Brad Guthrow on Twitter. That's the best way for you guys to get in. Also, check out Instagram at Brad Guthrow, but put the photo on your Instagram feed. Do something creative. Use hashtag AskLivelyTV and you will get answered on this show very quickly if you're that creative. So go mm -hmm. check us out there as well. With that said, Let's jump into the episode. First question it. comes from, this is like a reoccurring thing on the show, Cisco Balls. <laughs> You're on the top of the list again, my man. Cisco Balls from Snapchat says, what do you guys do for calcium without dairy in your diet? I know there are small amounts of calcium in lots of foods, but it seems like a glass of milk would fix that. By the way, lactose intolerant over here, been trying Tums just because they're all calcium. What are your thoughts on that deficiency? Feel free to paraphrase mm -hmm. in a post. So I think what you're referring to is, since we don't typically do a lot of dairy, the ongoing thoughts behind that is that's only the place you can get calcium, which is not necessarily true. But if you- Or at least the highest source is I think what he's referring to. Yeah. Most people think that's the highest and best source of calcium. Exactly, which it does have calcium in it, but there's vegetables have a lot of calcium in it as well. And there's a lot of other minerals in there as well that will actually help. Um, not, I mean, I don't know how to say that, but Jeremy, would you get you any thoughts well, on Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is, yeah, I would, I would try to uh, get the calcium through your diet of real whole foods. Yes. A lot of people have the mindset that they can only get it through dairy products. That is not the case. You can simply Google some of the foods you're eating and you'll see that calcium is in a lot of them. And then, you know, personally, if you're having an actual calcium deficiency, there's calcium pills. I mean, you can take mm -hmm. a calcium supplement if it's that, if you know, if you're coming that short on your needs. Absolutely. And like I was saying, if you, I forget what the other mineral is, and maybe you guys know you can jump in, but if you are higher in another mineral, calcium is not as much needed in your diet. Don't quote are me on about that. Potassium? It's potassium or magnesium. I don't know. It's if one, you, of, my, it's I, one <laughs> of them that if you are high in that, mm -hmm. calcium is, it, you don't need as much of it. So you just have to do your own research on that. But I've been going low dairy for how many years now? Mm, a, like a lot. Like a lot. Five, five and six? the bones, the muscles, the teeth were strong. <laughs> so yeah. don't don't fall for the hype that you need to have a glass of dairy milk every day and, and everything else. It's Honestly, I've never felt better without dairy. You know, I still have dairy sometimes, yeah, like so as treats. You know, we'll have ice cream or pizza or something occasionally. But not as part of a daily diet and I actually feel the healthiest ever yeah. so you know if you actually know you have a calcium deficiency it's one thing but just to think that you need dairy for calcium without having any sort of evidence of why I would just say right. you probably are getting plenty yeah You're freaking so, out for nothing yeah, yeah. so do you, do you do dairy in your diet at all? uh I try to stay away from dairy okay yeah, I, I don't do milk I don't do a lot of cheeses right. other than yep. like a cheat meal or whatever yep um yeah. I, I do drink a whey protein isolate mm -hmm. shake oh yeah um, we do that also and uh but I've never I mean I've, I feel so much better going dairy free absolutely um yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of people think you need like cheese or yogurt or cottage cheese no. to get protein also. 
it's not the best source of protein and there are better sources yeah. out there. So. But once again, guys, this is just our opinion. You guys got to do your own research, figure out what works for you and go from there. Let's go on to the next question. Yes. Do you want to read this one? Yes. All right. So this is from G at uh, Bloody Knuckles G. <laughs> Bloody Knuckles G. What's up on Twitter? <laughs> Um, so Brad, I'm 487 pounds, morbidly obese. What should I start doing to quickly start losing fat in the first week? All right. Great, great question. I'm going to throw this over to Jeremy. Just give a little Jeremy's background on, on your... This. My, I, I come from an obese background. I was well over 300 pounds, morbidly obese, um, managing many eating disorders, many addictions and turned my life around. And now I've dedicated the better part of the last decade, helping people in the same situation. Yeah. I specialize in obesity, I specialize in life mm -hmm. coaching and, and lifestyle coaching, um, along with obviously the health and fitness aspect of it. But um, this is right up my alley, so mm -hmm. I will take that. That one. question's yeah. perfect um, for you. So bloody knuckles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the biggest thing you need to understand is that you don't get to be over four hundred pounds because you just accidentally stopped going to the gym for a couple weeks, or you just accidentally overate a couple times. Right. Your lifestyle needs to be massively looked at mm -hmm. and revamped. This is also not going to be a sprint and you don't want it to be a sprint. You've got a long ways to go and that's okay. And you can still enjoy the journey along the way. To start, you don't have to have hardcore workouts. You don't have to go down to just eating plain chicken and broccoli. Mm -hmm. Start identifying some of the massive areas in your lifestyle that you know are contributing to the way that, the, the way that you are right now. And let's start working on those one by one by one. Even if that means getting off the couch and walking for five, Absolutely. 10 minutes a day. That can drastically start burning body fat in the first week like you're wanting. It doesn't have to be hardcore CrossFit workouts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to right. be running marathons. Just get up and start doing a little bit more than you're doing today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, right. and like I said, Jeremy's the expert on this, if, but if he wasn't here, I would have said exactly the same thing. I would have said, just get out for walks. Start, get the momentum going, and then you can just progressively build from there. But walking is your best friend when you, uh, you said you're 487 pounds. Yeah. Just get your legs moving, get your body moving however you can. I think one more tip is to, instead of focusing on what you should start doing, you could also focus on a couple of things that you could stop doing. Cause like Jeremy said, there's things in your life that are contributing to making this problem worse. So if you kind of identify what those things are and then you cut back on them slowly, I'm not saying go cold Turkey, but if you're having 12 sodas a day, maybe have 11 and then 10, you know, cut back gently so that it's not a major shock to your system, but so that you know that you are going in the right direction and you're stopping more weight from coming on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get the momentum going. Yeah, let's have All Jeremy right. read the Jeremy next asked the next right. one. This looks like it's coming from Twitter. We've got Carla Gayton. What's up, Carla? What is the difference in my workouts at home slash gym during season sports? Should I work out outside of practice? Okay, so I think... Oh. Carla asked a question a little while ago. Was she a soccer player? Oh, okay. I, I think she, in a previous episode, she was a soccer player. And so what is the difference my work was at home, gym, during, okay, during sports season. So I think if you looked at most pro athletes, and now I don't know where you are in the spectrum, if you're just, you know, a high school athlete or if you're actually training to be pro, um, most trainers wouldn't have their pro athletes training hard on the day of a sports or on the day of game an actual day. soccer right. Right. Of game. game day. So you kind of have to be very strategic with your workouts. Like you don't want to go crush a leg workout when you have a <laughs> hot or soccer game that it will night. End well. Yeah. So you just kind of have to be pretty smart with it. Um, you can still, you know, you know, get out for some walks during the day, but when it's game day, try to just focus on getting some relaxation, get some stretching in, get some mobility in, and then go kill the soccer game at night. Yeah, from what I remember from my athletic days, when you're having on season and off season, the on season is really more about the games themselves. Yeah. And that kind of serves as your workout. I mean, not that you're not doing any other workouts, but like he said, you're not crushing it um, in the gym to go out on the field and then have those noodle legs. Yeah. So you kind of have to like save yourself for the games. And then in the off season is when you really hit it harder mm -hmm. And even if you're doing your workouts at home, like you said, or at the gym, it doesn't matter either way, you kind of increase the intensity because you're not playing those games at that time. So this is your chance to really get stronger, break down muscle tissue and improve your game. I think, and I've gotten similar questions where people are worried about overtraining or yeah. working too hard, right? And that's, I think where she's going with it yeah. Yeah. is, you know, how much is too much yeah. when I have games coming up on Saturdays or Wednesdays or whatever. 
And nutrition plays a lot of that yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if, if you're wanting to do more, if you're wanting to improve and do above and beyond what maybe your coach is already doing with you weekly, you got to make sure that your nutrition is compensating enough and your rest is compensating yeah. enough to make up for that recovery. That's a great um, point. You know, is there too much? Yeah, obviously, like he said, you wouldn't want to go do a, a leg workout and then go out and play a game. But managing your time and your workouts accordingly, I think you can get away with some extra training to push you a little bit further yep. or improve your strength, improve your agility, whatever it may be assuming that your rest and, and food intake nutrition is yeah. on point. I mean, mm -hmm. as an athlete, your nutrition is going to be everything because you're going to have to get in a lot of calories if you're really, like, you know, you're working your body as much as you are. Like, look at Michael Phelps, like mm -hmm. 10,000 calories during his <laughs> season. So crazy. you got to have well, to. Yeah, and some people think that being athletic or being an athlete means you can eat whatever you want, and that's actually not true yeah. because you'll get better results if you eat the right foods and the right quantities and you really pay attention instead of just going on binge fests and then ignoring a couple yeah. meals. And yeah. so just don't be lazy about your nutrition. If you really dial it in and put more effort on your nutrition, you'll have better games, better overall fitness, and you'll just feel better. Better games and better gains. That's better right. games. <laughs> we gotta make a t-shirt saying that. Better games, games and better games. gains. All right, thanks for thanks that question. <laughs> Let's move on to Snapchat, Daniel Legier. Um, hi, Brad and Jess. What are the most common injuries in weightlifting that can be easily avoided oh yeah good one you want to take that jessica um let's see i think um i think of rotator cuff tears yep. a lot right does that come say. up yeah. in your mind yeah. yeah i feel like people can really mess up their rotator cuffs by doing improper form on things like pull downs pull-ups any pulling motions or um, pushing too and, push, and yeah, pushing yeah. motions bench press yeah, benches yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's really common and sometimes guys especially i think will go too heavy for their current um, strength and they'll just kind of like muscle it out and use sloppy form and then that causes injury so yeah i think um and daniel i've been getting to know you a little bit on snapchat so i think i know your story i think you uh, if i last remember you're in your 40-ish your 40s um so i'm getting up there myself like i'm 35 turning 36 in a couple months and i've yeah. noticed for myself I have to warm up a lot more than I did when I was in my early 20s. So I think a lot of reasons why people are getting hurt too um, when they do get up there in age is because they're just hitting the weights, going a little bit too heavy too early on without actually warming up their joints, warming up their body, warming up their muscles. So make sure you get a good warm up in as well. Big time. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, what else? The ACL tear is big, a right? ACL, or I've seen a lot of lower back. Yeah. Oh, lower, lower back, back is really common. Um, yeah, that's true. And, and, Knees, too. And, like, you know, improper deadlift form, improper mm -hmm. bent over rows, any sort of back row, really. A lot of people will have, you know, they'll round their back and just put a lot of strain on the lower back. So totally critical to watch proper form no matter yep. what you're doing. You're going to... Completely. You're gonna, yeah. <laughs> Not just for safety, but also so you actually get gains. You're working the target muscle. Like, yeah, and you don't waste your time in the gym because bad form not only can cause injuries, but it also can be like disappointing in terms of no gains. So No gains sucks. Don't do that. So <laughs> no sure. gains is worse than an injury. <laughs> so lift safely, but lift to get your gains. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this um, top one we did, this is the bottom one. Oh, okay. So it's from Dex to Real on Snapchat. Um, loving the names, you guys. Good job. <laughs> so, will you and Jessica do the Running Man challenge for your fans? Actually, funny <laughs> that you mentioned that because we did that today. today. So, oh. you know, I mean, today for you guys is going to be a little in a, like in, a month. Ago? Yeah. So just go One back. Month ago. Yeah. Um, what's today? What's the date today? It is the twenty second. So go back on okay. Instagram. I think it was post on fa my Facebook page as well. Go back, check out that. You see me and Jessica going head to head in the Running Man Challenge. I think I smoked her ass. <laughs> and Baby Bell <laughs> is there but too. She, I think she's getting the votes from the fans because the I sympathy the votes. votes yep. Because this is a white girl, like yeah. a what? straight up white girl, like I seriously. Because I'm because I'm pregnant. Because no. I'm ridiculous dancing pregnant. <laughs> you what? Possibly that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah. I look absurd. We're getting the with entire this female vote here because yeah. we got Prigo and yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. two things in my favor. <laughs> but anyway, go check that out. Uh, we had lots of fun doing that kind of stuff. So you funny. guys, if you guys want to see some other challenges, throw us our way. We always love acting like a fool and absolutely because life is too short to be serious all the time. Let's, yeah, we don't live like that. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm the live lean douche. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even a douche in real life. <laughs> doing it for you. Doing it for you. you got... You'll forever be remembered as that live lean douche. <laughs> so this one comes uh, from Mike. On YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Sorry. Mike awesome. McDonahue. McDonahue. McDonahue? McDonough. 
McDon McDonough. Sorry, Mike. McDonough. I, you're a, you're a regular contributor, and I can't pronounce your last McDonough? name. McDonough. McDonough. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I butchered it. I'm sorry, Mike. That's my fault. Send me a snap and like video and pronounce yeah. your name so we don't butcher it next time. <laughs> Do you guys meditate? Mm -hmm. If so, for how long? Brad, I'm learning a ton of good strategies from your new book. Nice. Almost done with it. Awesome. Uh, it's all about taking action, baby. Right on. It is. It really is. So meditation. Honestly, I was really, really into meditation like six years ago. And unfortunately, I'll be 100% honest, I fell off. Did I fall off because it didn't work? No, I actually really loved it. Fell I just because it did work. <laughs> yeah, I'm perfect now. <laughs> that's, one way to look, that's one way to look at it. Um, no, honestly, All like, problems are solved. I really would love to get back into it. Um, when I was into it, I wasn't an entrepreneur at the time. I was like on that path to become an entrepreneur and I think meditation helped me get there. Um, but it is definitely something I want to get back into and I recommend you guys do as well. Yeah, you know, I really think that um, it's the most useful in your time of most need, you know? It was the same way yeah. for me. Like, I meditated most when I had a life circumstance that Great I was point. not happy with, you know? Because that's when you really need it. It's like what we say about body transformation. Like, if you need to transform, you have to crank it up a notch, dial it up and really ignite your focus on your goal. And that's kind of how, what we use meditation for was to get to a place where we were mm -hmm. happier. And so we are at a happy place now, which doesn't mean that we don't need meditation, but I just think we need it less. Yeah. I recommend it for stress management. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When clients are really uh, complaining that their, their mind is just going constantly. And then many of my clients are in situations where then they, they self-sabotage either with binge eating or with something like that because of stress. Um, I will recommend that they do take some time and meditate, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, you know, for me, it's like, Hey, it's not necessarily a, a religious thing or doesn't have to be, if you don't want it to be, it can simply be clearing your mind, allowing your, your brain to just slow down from mm -hmm. all of the stresses and all of the distractions that you have visually going on around you. And if you're going to start, start with two minutes. Don't like mm. start with 20 minutes because you're going to drive yourself insane. Like what I did was I started with two minutes and your mind's going to race. You're going to feel like this is a waste of my time. Nothing's happening, but I'm telling you something will click. And when it does, like your mind will get clear and you know, but just start slow. Yeah. I feel like don't even put a timer or a clock on it. Like it doesn't even have to be two minutes. Just start with like two thoughts. Just focus on those thoughts mm -hmm. and like what you're trying to achieve in your life. That's what, what it was for me. It was so informal. And I would actually do a lot of my meditation during workouts. Like as I was working out, I'd that's be good. thinking about the body that I wanted to create. Yeah. To me, that's meditation. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, gym is a form of meditation. It's breathing, it's focusing, focused. it's concentrating. If you're focused. And a lot of people like the gym douche. <laughs> the gym douche. <laughs> <They're> not meditating. <laughs> How you living, girl? <laughs> But yeah, just try to take the mystery out of meditation and just think of it as focusing your thoughts. That's my tip. Nice. All right, let's keep this rolling. We're yes. going a good, good clip here. Next question from Sandra o Oleden. Oleden uh, from Olay. Snapchat. Hi guys, I have five, oh, five questions. Whoa, Sandra, <laughs> you're pushing it. You're pushing it. <laughs> hey girl. Let's just. It's gonna take us five weeks. Let's just see what these questions are. Uh, fitness YouTubers you follow is the first question. All right, Jeremy okay. Reed Fitness. Hey. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> right there. Um, I really do follow his videos. I like uh, them what about a lot. you? Um, fitness YouTubers. I follow Nikki Blackadder's vlogs. I like hers. Yeah. And she I mentioned on, I mentioned on Snapchat the other day, one, I don't follow many guys on YouTube. I do follow Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, big yep. shout out to him mm -hmm. as well as He's from, not a fitness from oh, from fitness, yeah, it's a um, it would be Steve Cook. And now Steve Cook's been on the show a couple times. Big shout out to Steve Cook. Great guy. Yeah. Second question was music recommendations for workouts. That question is like, what I like is not necessarily what right. you're going right. <laughs> to like. Like if I tell you, listen to Elvis Presley, like is that going to pump you up? It's like saying, what should my favorite color be? Yeah, or it's true. Food. Yeah. But I mean, if I threw something out there, I'm like a hip hop guy. So that's what I would say. Uh, I have a heavy metal background. Okay, um, there you go. And Whoa. so I, I listen to the music that makes you want to punch puppies. What? <laughs> it's not for everybody. Um, so what's like one band? Like uh, Lamb of God, Chimera, Meshuggah. All right. I never uh, heard of any of them. But exactly. <laughs> way over my yeah. head. I have no idea. And what do you like? You like 50 Cent, right? Um, I recommend you like the color green. <laughs> <laughs> 
kidding. What's that? It's my favorite color, right. so it should be my okay. favorite color. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But yes, I really do like to listen to 50 Cent while I work out. And especially that one time I saw him in the gym and took a yeah, selfie. We had After a good, that, I listened to 50 Cent like everywhere. Yeah, we now. had a good chat with 50 for a long time. So he's a good yeah. dude. And his songs really do get me like even though to Even up. though he was hitting on my wife at the time. Well, <laughs> But it's 50 Cent. I mean... It's all good. I was using it's actually a squat a compliment rack. To you. It is. I take right? I take that as a compliment. Like if Fifty Cent can have probably any girl in the world, if he's hitting yeah. on you, my wife, yeah. you score. I'm doing something well. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, so let's just quickly uh, considered baby girl names yet. That's we're not going to release that yet. So let's move forward. <laughs> we're going to name her Bruna. Most effective exercises in the gym for basketball players. Uh, that's a whole other question, but let's just throw out squats, some plyometrics in there for explosion. And yeah, I love jumping. Anything else, Jeremy? Like uh, work on your cardio. I mean, cardio. if you're a hardcore basketball player, you're going to be running all. You're going to be running all game long. So really work on your cardio so you don't get burnt out. And the last one was, what was the most interesting part of writing? Writing Think and Live Lean. I love that question. So Think and Live Lean was the book I just launched. The most interesting part was getting really deep into the personal Ooh. stories that I share with you guys about my journey. I mean, as a dude who um, has a lot of testosterone run through his body to open himself up like that and be share vulnerable. all, yeah, be that vulnerable with you guys. I shared all of my insights into my business in there as well, like my vision for my business. I shared all the heartaches that I went through growing up, um, losing my friends, going through a divorce. I shared it all. That was like therapy for me. So that's what I would say was the most interesting part. That's a scary thing is like just revealing all your flaws. Yeah. It's especially paper. for men, I would say. Yeah. Like it's for a man to be transparent like that yeah. is it, it, it takes some balls. It yeah. really does. It really does. But it was awesome in the reviews you guys are saying. So I appreciate grateful for everybody who has read the book. Next, that was great. Five questions, and I don't know how long, but we <laughs> banged those <laughs> out. Quick, quick, quick. All right, we've got from Snapchat, Mar Marisol Cad. <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. It's I'm hard, so sorry. Brad. Jim Douche. Mar Mar <laughs> yeah, uh, Marisol Cadrill. Uh, Cadrill? Moving You on. know who you are. Yeah. So, we are told that we have to eat in order to build muscle and get lean. Why is it that bodybuilders restrict calories in order to get lean for competition? Not that I want to starve myself, yeah. just curious. Well, mm. let's, let's throw it over to the uh, lady who's done all the competitions. Have you ever uh, done competition? a competition? I have. Okay, so you got two. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. let you two we take this. We got two competitors on the show today. All right, so from a female perspective, what do we got? Yes. Okay, so I really had a huge education with this. When I first started competing, I actually learned very quickly that I was way undercutting my calories because when I first started, all the advice was that females should be around 1,200 to 1,500 calories. And that just goes across the board. doesn't matter what your yeah. height is and Co everything. Cookie which, cutter. Yeah, it's so ridiculous now looking back. But at the time, I totally ate that up and I believed it. So I put myself on this restrictive diet and I was fitting in low calorie foods like rice cakes and like low fat yogurts and things like that to keep my calories below a certain level. And I just wasn't making any gains, you know, my body was looking the same. And like with all the cardio I was doing, I got skinnier, but I just didn't look shapely like competition shape is supposed mm -hmm. to look. So yes, it is true that you have to eat to make gains. I learned that the hard way by making anti-gains and then figuring it out. So yes, I absolutely believe that that's true. But then again, to lean out and kind of do your final cut prep, you need to be really diligent about what you're eating and how much. So yes, it is somewhat calorie restrictive, but it's not like insanely restrictive like 1200 calories like i wouldn't go that low mm -hmm. but you want to cut your calories slightly so you're in a daily deficit you also increase your exercise and that's what helps you get like ultra shredded for the day of the show i think too it, it depends it's going to be a little different for a guy than it is a girl just because of the yeah. s the stigma for a guy like oh i'm in, i'm bulking i'm <laughs> off season whatever you hear that a lot yeah. where guys in the off season will be eating four or five thousand calories yeah. taking these mass gainer shakes and they're constantly full and then it comes time to cut down for a competition and they're complaining about how little they're eating when in reality, so they're not really not. eating that little. Right. They're just eating little compared to the 6,000 calories yeah. a day they were eating before. Yep. And so, yeah, I mean, in order to get lean up, you are going to have to restrict your calories uh, from where you were, obviously, but right. um, it does not have to be this major, major starvation thing. Absolutely. So, yes, it is true. And... You know, but it's always like a but, but it depends right. on like where you're at and where you've been and the person. where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. And the person and your metabolism type and your training. There's like a whole lot of things. But when you're going into competition, 
you need to know all the details, like how many calories you need, how many calories your workouts are burning, and you know, like what types of foods work best for your body. Like I even got to the point where I knew which carbs my body liked better, like Heck between yeah. rice and sweet potatoes. Like I was that dialed in yeah. that I could tell a difference in my body if I had sweet potatoes versus rice. Yeah. So competition is a whole nother level of seriousness and dedication and really like putting a microscope on your nutrition and your fitness. But competitions is not what living lean is all about. I'll just no. I'll just put it that out there because I've never competed. I've never wanted to compete. It's never been about that. Not that I have anything against people that compete. I honestly don't because a lot of people transform. Yeah, bro, what you trying to say, bro? No, I, I'm I'm not dissing on that. I'm just saying, for me, like I get asked this question all the time. Why don't you compete? Why don't yeah. you compete? Because it's not Cause about you look that. Show ready all it's the not time. about that to me. It's it's more it's more a self esteem thing for me. Like I'm competing against myself. I'm trying to get better. Right. I'm trying to get stronger. It's not about going up on stage and trying to beat other competitors. But right, which I think is where Jeremy and I eventually came to. Like, wouldn't you say well, you're at a place oh, where yeah, you yeah. don't need you that anymore? You won't do it again? No, I will not. Right. Did, was it a good experience? It was a great experience. Yeah. And Same for myself, me. too. I mean, yeah. I, I was at, you know, 300 and some odd pounds, yeah. dieted all the way down to 170 to compete wow. in middleweight bodybuilding. Isn't that so intense? You know, like, that was kind of the end of my, I, the first part of my journey, I guess you could say. That yeah. was yeah. the, that was the, you know, that was the thing. And I was doing it all for me. Yeah. You call it a competition. I was only competing with myself yeah. too. Right. I, I was not competitive up there. Um, but it gave you but motivation. I, I did, you know, I, I was proud of the amount of effort that I put in and where I go. took my physique. So, so that's, right. a, that's an important piece there. But I just, I know so many people. I know so many girls, especially personally, I know them that have gone in, they've competed and they have done some damage to their body right. mm -hmm. because they just didn't do it the right way. And they're, they're like, right now they're... Anyway, or I'm, having the wrong attitude coming out of a show, yeah. like thinking, oh, now the show's over, I can just eat whatever right. and never work out again. Yeah. Reverse That's, dieting is just as important. Yes, it's just yeah. as important which is a whole that. other thing we can talk about if you guys want to learn more about that. But but it's not really what our show it's is It's not like what Living said, Lean but. is all about. This is a lifestyle, 365 yeah. for us. So yeah. let's jump into one more question. All right, Giovanni. Giovanni. <laughs> I got an easier name. <laughs> <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> So, um, love your YouTube channel. It has helped me stay positive and lose a lot of weight, but I was wondering what would be the best workout and diet for a 17 year old trying to gain muscle. By the way, congrats on the baby. All right. So Thank you're so nice. <laughs> yeah. We got, we got the best viewers. Awesome. Yeah. 17. 17 and so polite. Yeah. I, I was that polite at 17, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni. He's also got an awesome name. Yeah. yeah. There's a name awesome. like that. You got me. Um, so best workout and diet for a 17 year old, honestly, like it's hard for me to say, but as a 17 year old, you're going to be making gains pretty much whatever you do, to be honest. <laughs> um, so unfair. The, you get the noob gains, the newbie gains Oops. where whatever you do, your body is just going to be like, it's going to be shocked because it's something different unless you've been training for a while. But at 17, I assume you're not, you haven't. So but I mean, the hormonal the, environment is the like raging just yeah, the ra you yeah. got it, man. Yeah, the raging awesome. testosterone. But I would put it really depends on if the, if you're new to training or you're not. But a simple like well, he's I already lost weight by training, right? But for lost a lot of weight, yeah. But for yeah. building muscle though, like what I did personally to start building muscle was I stuck to the typical bodybuilder pyramid style training, where you start with a set of twelve, then you go down to ten, you go up in weight, go down to go down to eight, go up in weight, and you know, just Basically do three sets do of the, every exercise. Yeah, do the split. Major um, muscle groups. But you know what? It's it's different for everybody, but you can try that. Like, what do you think, Jeremy? I, I would hit, I mean, to answer your question of specifically gaining muscle, I would hit the tried and true yeah. basic, basic. Like, exercise. don't try to get yeah. weird and creative. Don't be the 17-year-old in the gym doing something no one's ever seen. Yeah, foundation. Stick to the basic foundation lifts. Squat, deadlift, bench press, shoulder press, you know, seated rows, these types of things that are just tried and true stuff they've been using for decades to right. put mass on a body. Yeah. You nice. do that and eat and your hormones as they are right now, I mean, you are going, there's no way you can't pack on muscle. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, I, but I would throw it out there to you that um, don't make the same mistake a lot of guys do. I made this mistake early that you're just training mirror muscles. So when I say mm -hmm. mirror muscles, talking the biceps and the chest. So every day is bicep, chest day. And shoulders right. maybe. And shoulder yeah. day. So make sure you do use those foundation squats. exercises. The squats and deadlifts, deadlifts are just like going to create your testosterone or pump up your test. Yeah. Like it's just going to put the mass on. And a lot of people are like, my legs are already big. I don't need to trade legs. But it's not just about building leg muscle. Like by lifting, doing those lifts, your hormones are going to be creating even more muscle in other areas of your body. So you just got to keep focused on those big guys. So what do you think? 
Yeah, I completely agree. You need to train yourself early with the foundation exercises. Don't waste your time with any of like extraneous stuff. Like don't be doing wrist curls and you know, don't. At, at 17, you're getting plenty of wrist exercises, <laughs> yeah. trust me. Oh my God. Okay, you're on a set here with two guys. You know where mine's going to go directly there with that kind of, but, you know. What I'm saying is, yeah, just, and don't make your program too complicated. Like, if you just went to the gym and you just did, like, three big lifts, yeah. like deadlift, squat, and bench press, that's a good enough workout as long as you're really challenging yourself with just those three. So yeah. keep things simple. Um, keep progressing heavier each week. And make sure that you're really challenging the muscle. And then, like they were saying, too, you have to eat. I think that's where most 17 year olds would fail is yeah. they wouldn't eat enough. All right. So I think we're going to call that a show. I don't know how many questions we answer there, but that should be a good one. Yeah. So just want to say thanks, Jeremy, for coming on out to the show. Where can people find more from you? Uh, Facebook, Jeremy Reed Fitness. YouTube, Jeremy Reed Fitness. Instagram, Jeremy Reed Fitness. Right there. <laughs> and, and Snapchat. And Snapchat, uh, Jeremy L. Reed. Yeah. I, need to, I, it's, it's, I feel like I've gone too far. I can't turn back now with Snapchat. Yeah, I know, right? But my name is not Jeremy Reed Fitness on Snapchat. Also, so. Is that the only one that you're It's the only one. Ah. Yeah. Stupid. That's, <laughs> that's Stupid. all good. So, I know. I have all different names. We'll, we'll link those up down below for you guys, and hopefully you enjoyed his performance in uh, that YouTube video we talked Jim about douche. earlier. Jim douche. And so let's throw out, uh, we do a question of the day here on the show, so we always throw it over to the guests. So oh, what do you man, want? Yeah, we're just going to put you on the spot. Yeah. So let's just, any kind of question. It doesn't have to be fitness related. It can be lifestyle. It can be about anything. What do you want to know from our viewers? Make them think. Um, have you already done their favorite baby names? Oh, no, no, that's a good one. I, I mean, we got a question about the baby names, yeah. and, and I can tell it's something you guys are kind of keeping uh, under the yeah. curtains right I now. I like that. What are your favorite girl baby names? There you Let's go. Let's get those names coming. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we, I mean, to put it out there, we already know what the name is. So it's not like you're going to change our opinion, but we well, maybe, maybe, there's, a, maybe a there's a free signed book if they guess. <laughs> yes, good call. Or something like that. There, eh? free eh? signed book, eh? Think I'll and Live Lean. Jeremy Reed Fitness t-shirt. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you so up. if you guys guess, that's a perfect thing. If you guess our baby name, we already know what it is, we will give that. And I don't think we released it yet. We haven't talked about it. I hope it. I haven't told anybody. So no, anybody that knows us personally, you're not getting the yeah. book and the t-shirt. So yeah. Friends and families do not apply. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we'll call that a show. Any last words, Jessica? Or yeah, we... thank you guys so much. Don't forget to ask us more questions yeah. to keep this show rolling because we need new questions every week. So yeah. ask us on Brad's Twitter. It's at Brad Guthro with the hashtag AskLivelingTV and you'll be sure to be featured. Yeah, there. so a lot of you guys are asking questions, like you're snapping me questions and everything, but put the hashtag AskLivelingTV because that shows me that you want us to answer it on the show. And the, sh the, the questions you guys ask is the reason why we're doing the show. So if we don't have questions, we can't do the show. So And literally, don't worry about them being too personal because we get questions about protein farts and like all yeah. kinds of personal stuff. So Bubble guts. Seriously, there's nothing that would be too personal to ask on the show. 17-year-old like wrist strength. <laughs> 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 and honestly, it makes, it makes the shows more interesting for us it as does. well it's that we fun. don't keep getting the same, how do I lose belly fat? Right. Or what do I do to, what, you know, what's a good protein source? Like... Just try to be creative, guys. We love your questions. We love your feedback. So just try to come up with some cool things, and we guarantee you we'll get you on the show. Surprise us. Yeah. And I'm right. banging on this, and you told me not to bang. Yeah, oh. I told him not to make so much noise on the counter. Does that bother you guys? No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We Thank will be you. back again next week with another episode. Thank you guys for watching. And Kate! Live, Live in lane. lane.